Welcome to Living Mosaic, a project of the Spark of Humanity Network. My name is Martha Holden. I'm a member of the Spark of Humanity Network. Living Mosaic was conceived as a, an expression of our understanding that there is a solution to the horrors that we read about and see and some of us experience worldwide, planet-wide, all ecosystems, that there is a solution. And it may be conceived as understood, visualized as a living mosaic in which we each have a little, tiny, unique, and essential place or role. And so what we're hoping to do through the series is encourage people to hold that faith, hold that understanding, and thus avoid the pits of denial and despair and move towards engaging with their place in the mosaic so that they become, so we, become willing to let go of the thought forms, the habits, the responses, the understandings, the ancestral heritage, whatever gets in the way of our being developed, matured, molded, drawn into our role within the mosaic. And in order to do this, we need, of course, to have community and a feeling that there are other people on the same path and that it is a justified, maybe not justified, it's a, it's a hope, it's a conviction, it's a belief, it's a, I guess conviction is a good word, it's, it's something that we choose to live by. It's, what we're discovering is that is that whether or not, you know, we can't prove, we can't get out a textbook or a graph or a device and prove that this premise is true. However, what we find as we choose to live as if it were true, if we choose to move into it, to live into it, to try it out, that we begin to experience it's truth. We begin to feel and have experiences and things start happening to us, synchronicities, whatever you want to call them, hints, insights, that strengthen, that feed our conviction that this is in fact true, that there is a solution, and that we're each part of it. And so there, there you have it, right? It's, we've got 21 minutes and 17 seconds to go. I could shut up right there, right? But I think it's maybe helpful to you, it's certainly helpful to me to thrash around in here because there are people, some of them are dear friends of mine, who are sort of like, yeah, but I'm not sure, or I don't know, or I don't want to get involved with something that you know, that I haven't read in the newspaper or I haven't seen online. Well, we're online. But, you know, that that I I need to know the ground is solid before I'm willing to put my foot on it. And there are people like that. And I, and I need to have all my friends doing it too so I know it's safe and it's a socially acceptable and it's a good thing to do. So I have the support of the herd. Um, well... As I say, dear friends, I have some who respond that way, yet the ground becomes solid when we put our foot on it. We have to be willing to step out, or perhaps it's not a matter of stepping, it could just be, oh, I could just handle this differently than I've handled it before. Let me, let me try something new. Let me... Let me just do it this way and see what happens. It's a, there's some 
story par parable that was going around about you know and yeah until you step off off the cliff you don't realize that you have wings that you can fly with this isn't quite that that extreme but um excuse me I'm in the later stages of cold <coughs> as you can hear so it's a process and 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 you know you may have tuned in thinking oh good Finally, she'll tell us what the solution is. The solution is just our living into it, personally, individually. And maybe hearing about it from friends, you know, oh, I tried this, and I really get the idea that there really is a solution, and I'm beginning to feel my way into my part of it. I'm, I find myself changing. I find myself willing to change. I just there's a different sort of quality to my life. And we may hear that from friends or not friends, just people, and become willing to move into it ourselves. There's no there's no blueprint. Well, there may be a blueprint for the solution, but I don't have access to it. And I'd just as soon not, because it would probably just confuse me. And I don't have a blueprint for your finding, living into your place in the solution. I don't know how you do that. I can support you, and I can trust that that is possible for you. I can know that that's possible for you. I can encourage you, but I don't have a blueprint for your journey. I don't have a blueprint for my journey. It's a simple matter of opening up. It's a beginning to develop the, the mental habits. Or perhaps it's, it's more like dropping the mental habits, being willing to get beyond the mental habits and being like very neutral and calm like a, like a pond or the ocean, when the water is very still, no wind, nothing, just be open and receptive and become aware of, feel, experience what's coming up. The ideas, the, the changes, the nuances. How do we do that? How do we open up like that? And, and that's something that you get to find out for yourself, knowing that everyone else who's been on this journey or any journey close to it or associated with it has gone through the same process. You're not unique. You are unique in terms of being your place in the solution. You're one of a large company in terms of you're going through turning yourself over to experimenting with, at least, trying out this this process, this willingness, exploring your willingness to to be available, to be available to the insights and the changes and the directions and the nuances and the intuitions and the opportunities. It's not just internal. As you move further, as we move further into our place <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry, our journey is we become more aligned with our transitional journey closer into our place in the mosaic. External things happen. It's not just internal. And when we notice those and we appreciate them and we acknowledge them, That helps fuel our process. We don't do this, in a sense, we do this entirely alone, since we're each unique. But we're also doing it as members of, you've probably heard me say this before, we're each members of an ever-evolving, multi-dimensional 
perhaps omnidimensional, dance of all being. It's all, you know, it's all, there's, we're just part of a dance. And so how, how we allow ourselves to be part of the dance rather than, well, I, it needs to be this way for me. I need to have that. She needs to do this. He shouldn't do that. All, <coughs> all that judgment stuff we've talked about earlier. Just recognizing we're part of the dance so we let go of and we can, because we are, in a sense, children of the dance, we are creatures of the dance, we can trust the dance because there really isn't anything else we can trust. We can't trust, we can't trust our own instincts because they don't necessarily conform with the nature of reality, the nature of being. They're just instincts that we have. So we can trust the dance so as we begin to let go of our preconceptions, our self-will, our, our preferences even, and let go of that. And you said, the way I think of it is Wile E. Coyote running off the cliff, um, and sort of let go of that running, 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 trying to get what we want, what we need, what we're, culture tells us we need or want, and we let ourselves relax into this gracious, multi-dimensional trampoline of the dance, and we begin to recognize ourselves within the dance, we begin to experience ourselves as members of the dance, and so we're not so tightly holding ourselves into the way our grandmothers thought we should be, or our grandfathers, or whoever, or we thought we should be. So we begin to get the, get the sensation of it, the experience of it, in our tissue, in our bones, in our souls. And we begin to be willing to just go a little further. My, my sense, my, as we move into this year of initiating this process, this project, is that the dance keeps moving on. The mosaic is living. It's a basic premise of it. And when we came up with that term, I, I was at least wasn't paying attention to the fact that it's, it's living, which means it's growing and evolving and changing and breathing and you know, digesting and whatever it's doing to live, that it's, it's drawing me in. I don't, I don't believe, or let's say, I believe that I cannot say, okay, I've found my place in the mosaic. I'm set for life. I am a unique and essential part of the solution, and here I am, stable. This is the way it is for me from now on. Great, I've got it. Oh, holding on to it. No, the mosaic is living. And so I have to be alive. I have to be responsive. There are no, and what I'm finding, and I think some others of us are finding, I haven't checked it out with them yet, but that, that the closer I get in to being the essential, unique part of the mosaic that we each are, the closer, the the more it's like I'm provided with downtime. I'm provided with time for a nap. If I accept it, if I see it, if I recognize it, you know, if I don't think, oh, I've got this to do. You know, this is, this, I want to get this done. I want this to get this done so I can relax. You know, and there's this day and a half or whatever, half an hour, whatever span of time when it's sort of given to us and we want to cram it and everything into it so that we can have time to relax and just be present after we've done all that stuff. When we think about it, it really doesn't make sense. Better to say, okay, I'll get to that stuff that I have in mind when I get to it. But now I'm given this half hour or this day and a half 
or whatever, to just be. And this is where I am. And I don't know what the dance is doing around me, and I cannot catalog the subtle changes that the dance is creating in me, that the mosaic is bringing to life in me. I, I don't know that. I'm not, I'm not aware of it. You know, not, not the sharpest tack on the board. So I, <coughs> excuse me. So learning to just take, be present with what is. This is not very, well, it may be profound, but it's very familiar for many of us who've been paying attention to the airwaves and what well-known people are saying. Just, you know, pay attention to what is and be present with what is and not try to be jamming ahead into what we think needs to be, should be, will be. We, you know, yeah, if it's part of the dance, if it's meant to be part of the mosaic, it will happen in the right time, <coughs> in the right way, without us trying to force it, without our choreography, with just our gently allowing it permission and being present. Oh, okay, I think I'll do this now. I think I'll, you know, take the scarf off my neck. It's too hot. <coughs> Sorry, I really apologize. But, you know, there it is. More time to just be, right? So that learning to pay attention to the down times and to appreciate them and to realize they're there. They're fruitful. It's not, I'm not doing anything. I'm not being productive. I need to be productive. No. We don't need to be productive. We just simply get to be present to whatever truth, whatever reality, whatever... <coughs> that could be taken several ways. As we let go of our distorted, diseased thought habits, we get so we can trust ourselves better, so that when a thought or an instinct comes up, we are willing to explore it a little bit, you know, take a step or two into it, see how it feels. Not going whole hog at first, you know, just testing the waters, asking our friends, asking our non-friends, just try it out. So that we're not we're not leaping ahead, but we can develop that. That's part of what we're hoping to be supporting here, encouraging here is is developing a sensitivity to the dance. Simply opening up. It's like opening up our our cells, our being, so we're not so strongly encased in our image. We're just unique energy systems, information systems within this ever-evolving multidimensional dance. We're just, we're just thought bubbles, information bubbles, or we're just in the dance, but we're members of the dance. And so we don't need to be protecting ourselves against what happens. We can know that we have the integrity. There's a reality, there's a core truth to us, which we may not be in touch with yet, um, but there is one. And we can begin to let go of everything that gets in the way of our appreciating that and being able to live from its resonance, from its vibration. It's a, it's a process. It takes a while. It takes practice. It helps to have support, and we're happy to support you. We, our email is on the screen, um, and we'll support you in whatever way we can. It, just know that it's possible and be willing to willing to try it out a little bit if the idea appeals to you.
being part of the solution, then see where you're drawn to try it out. Developing intuition, developing your unique sense, because I don't know what you are, your part within the living mosaic. I don't know that. I barely, I'm not sure I know mine, but I know that I'm, I feel like I'm growing into it, I'm moving into it, I'm allowing myself to be drawn into it. So I can support you in yours, but I, you know, that, that's what I can do. And I believe that for you. I believe that there's an essential truth to you that is needed. It's essential on both meanings of the word. It's the essence and it's needed. It, it's needed. So there's that within you. And it's unlike anybody else's same. You're unique in that way. That is your unique. So comparing yourself to this person over here or that person over there <coughs> is a waste of energy. A waste of time. It's a distraction. Distractions. When I go through literature, sacred literature that talks about evil and ugliness and all that, I just cross it out, but distractions. It's the distractions that, and they come from in here, and some of them come from out there, but the big factory is right in here. But to, to realize that there is a unique, there's a truth to you. A unique truth to you. That the solution needs. The solution will not be the solution. Cannot be the full solution without you. It can show up in places around you, perhaps enough if you're one of these, so you can say, oh, I can see some solution happening over there. Oh, there's some happening over there. Oh, oh, maybe I'll get on board now. You know, that, that can be. Or you can just say, I think I'm going to try this out. And if we said in other shows and other sessions, <coughs> a way that we offer of becoming, letting go of having our defenses eroded, our bafflement clarified, and our distortions released is through the spark of humanity practice. There are a gazillion other practices that this is just what we happen to know and so we are offering it. We're not saying it's the best. Um, it works for us and we want to offer it to you because <coughs> I do apologize because we all need all the support we can get in this journey. Um, it's simple, it's not easy. And it can also, has the potential for being the most fun we've ever had in our lives. And it is the route to the most profound joy. So welcome aboard. And I want to, before we close, just be silent for a couple of seconds here to let things sink in. And if you have any last minute questions, send them this way. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for joining us. And thank you as always to Orca Media here in beautiful uptown Montpelier and to the folks here and the technology and all the good people that make this show possible. Have a good couple of weeks, a blessed November. Take care.